What's good, y'all? Welcome to another video. This time is the SH Figure Arts, The Mandalorian. So, let's get started. Uh, if you've bought the Black Series Mando, you've highly anticipated SHF doing one. Now we actually have one from them, and it's been released during these uh, times. So yeah, let's jump into the review. Real quick, I want to start by saying uh, Mando actually came out pretty nice. There's going to be some gripes for some people, uh, and there's going to be some really decisive engineering choices for some people. So... Let's start by jumping into the look and the articulation and then see how we feel about the other stuff, right? So here we have the Mando being the cool Mando that we know and we like. There is no wide cape, which is a little bit of a disappointment, but I can also see they've made uh, choices for the slit engineering design. I'm really actually disappointed there is no wide cape. I would have loved a free flowing one, but hey, we have our bandolier attached to the belt. We have our design choice of the weapon flap which actually I kind of like, I like that choice. But yeah, articulation wise, I really think we have something really nice here. A little bit of a pet peeve with the uh, thigh swivel area and the chest bandolier, but otherwise I think it's actually pretty nice. Now, let's, now that we have a full grown up and down look at them, uh, let's talk about articulation. Uh, we have our head, we can go up, we can look down just a little bit. We can also move the head a little forward to get a little bit further down, in case you have that in mind. We can tilt side to side, all that good jazz. We can tilt upwards for more expression as well too. In case you wanna be a cool looking Mando, you know, looking at everybody sideways. For our arm articulation, we actually can rotate out. The shoulder pad is on the arm. You can rotate all the way around. Shoulder pad can go back up and the arm can go up. And that bend delay issue actually happened on camera. We'll get to that in a second. We have a rotating bicep swivel and our arms are double jointed. So you can actually punch yourself in the head for doing dumb stuff, right? Arms can go up. Now we have a torso swivel. We can go left, we can go right. Our biggest issue that we face, at least that I personally face, is that bandolier issue of the plug being removed. You can get really articulated with the bandolier because this tiny plug will pop out because it's supposed to basically fill in a gap for two parts. One being for when you have the rifle and this small one for being uh, when you basically are not using it. The problem is it is very tiny and you will lose it. You will absolutely lose it, especially when you rotate side to side doing anything articulated, which is kind of annoying. So as you can see, I'm having issues even popping it in. That is because actually, whoop, let me get my light down. You need to line it up with the chest. That means the chest needs to be actually standing at a certain point which is why this is going to become tedious when doing it. I'm absolutely probably going to leave this out, right? As you can see, I've plugged it in. Now watch this. I may lose this piece because of it. <laughs> if you rotate, you'll see it gently come up and out. Even if I remove the bandolet up, it can stay in place just a little bit, but the more you move it around, the more likely it'll come out and become loose. That's actually gonna be quite a pain, so I'm gonna leave it out but you actually get a decent crunch going forward from the upper torso. It's not gonna be anything crazy or special, but it does look pretty good for a guy in armor. If we're being realistic, you're not supposed to have any real ab crunch in an armor that stretches down to your waist like this. So, but you got some pretty decent movement, right? Our legs, even with the flaps out on the side, they've made room for that. You actually have a pretty decent room going outward. Our legs cannot go backwards because of our butt flap, but our leg can go forward it has double joints, right? And we have a generous ankle pivot that actually gets, actually it's a really nice ball joint too that can goes forward, backwards and can tilt. So you actually have a lot of room for movement. So you can get posed up with that. Like I said, I think my biggest two grips right now are going to be the peg piece and the not uh, wired cape, the non-wired cape, sorry, but yeah. He actually looks really good. I like him all posed up. Still, even with the cape, it's not a bad look, right? As you can see, he can be posed up, got that nice toe pivot there. Really like a really nice movement. Now, for all those other issues though, let's talk about the weaponry. So weapon-wise, uh, we get our rifle from Endo. This actually looks pretty good. I'm not sure about my lighting situation right now because it's all up in my own face. So I'm doing my best to cover it all while being blinded. So yeah, we have the rifle. It's well painted, well articulated. It is not weathered. It looks very clean. So for those of you who customize, you will have an excellent job having fun 
pretty much painting this guy up. Otherwise, it's going to be like whatever for you. Then we have our pistol. As you saw there, it's going to be a swappable part like you did with other stuff, like with Han Solo. So you got to swap it out for an empty one. Here is our swappable part. What you're going to do is you can actually just pop it right off. And what you can do is you're going to exchange this one piece that pops out for the empty one. And then pop it right back on the side on the two tabs. I'm going to leave it off for a little bit, though. Then we have our chest. Well, sorry, our chest piece for the bandolier. And this one gets a little complicated. And I'll show you why. Because you plug it in. Well, I'm going to have to stand him straight up, which is kind of annoying because I want to leave him in that cool pose. <laughs> so, yeah. Actually, I wanted to start this intro with something funny, but I'm not really feeling funny, which is kind of like it sucks because I want to be me. But I'm not really feeling like me. And uh, I'm just talking while I do this. So I have some something to talk about. It's a little frustrating because you want to be the best you that you can be. And sometimes that's tough. It's really, really tough. So the best thing you can do is check in on people. Make sure that they're OK. Check in on your friends, y'all, for real. If you haven't already, please do. They are not OK. Nobody's OK right now. So with Mando, right? I'm going to plug this piece in, as you see here, it goes right over. I'm going to tap that kick down. You are going to get interchangeable parts for your rifle. And here's what's really cool about it, right? I'm going to separate the rifle into three pieces. This middle piece will get swapped with another piece. This piece is going to have a part here that allows you to have the tab in for the back. I'm going to just find the right parts for the rifle. All right, tap it all in. I think something happened to one of my rifle pieces. I'm not sure what that is on there, but yeah. And then on the top, and this is gonna be very difficult to see, there's going to be a very small tab that you're going to pull out. And this is what I was talking about with a funny engineering choice. When I feel like this could have just been one of those things that plugged in normally, <laughs> and it's just not. Because here with the opening slit, they want you to put this through the slit and plug it into this back piece, which my focus is not there. You're gonna plug it into the back piece first so that it plugs in and hangs on and then find this plug piece and have it hang over the shoulder. Now design wise, this looks great when you are standing straight up, but it does not hold in place. It does not. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little bit of a struggle. And I just don't like the fact that tabbing this in is more of a chore than it is enjoyable. So as you can see here, part swapping on the Mando is a complicated profession. So yeah, as you can see here, it's on. It's, it's nice and it looks sturdy. But tabbing it in that first issue is kind of complicated and a little bit tedious, especially for those of you who may have twiddly D thumbs like me and will drop everything. When standing the Mando straight up, this will look absolutely awesome. Doing any action pose with him may prove to be difficult, so try not to get a little too crazy with that. So, yeah, you know, toy collecting this uh, toy collectors, I should say, please be prepared for that. Right. Um, then we have our hands. So I'm going to leave all of this stuff on because, like I said, you've watched me do it on camera profusely. So, yeah, we have our open relax hands. Sorry, these are our open action hands, as you can see here. We have our open relax hands. These are a little bit more uh, relaxed when walking or holding an item. This one is definitely for holding the rifle in the hand. This is going to be your your left hand for the rifle. You have your right hand strictly for the pistol. And you have your right hand strictly for the rifle. This is going to be a wider grip than that of the original pistol hand, as you can see. Oop, now you can't see my fingers in the way, but now you can. So, yeah. One of the cool things is if you have any other SHF stuff, right? If you use the uh, wider, if you use the, the pistol hand, you can use a lightsaber and put it into the pistol hand 
right? Or if you're a guy who collects black series, right? For the black series, you can actually put them into the rifle holding hand. And I know if you see my black series review, you saw that I use lightsabers. So, you know, I'm with the shits, right? As you can see here, you can have some fun with that. But yeah, I think that just about covers everything. Personally, I think Mando came out excellent. Um, I just think that the engineering choices for the bandolier swapping option may be a little too complicated for some people. So it may not be one of those things that you sit down and do multiple times. If you're definitely going to do it, you're going to choose one. But as a toy photographer, you don't have that choice. You're definitely going to be swipping and swapping and swapping around parts. And so please don't get extremely frustrated. Just only get frustrated. <laughs> Like me right now with this tabbing on, I'm scared on camera because as always, I have crazy camera anxiety. So, yeah, but y'all put up with me, so I appreciate that. There we go. Right. So I'm going to stand him straight up and then I'm going to compare him to a bunch of other stuff. All while doing that really cool swipe down thing that I've been adding on lately, trying to get good at editing and y'all. So now we're jumping into the part where we go over the size comparisons. First things first, I'm going to compare this guy to Boba Fett because that's what everyone wants to see. I have the SHF Boba Fett. Um, my Moffex one is somewhere up in the attic. I'm not going to look for it because you already know that he is taller, so it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, this was just like next to the SHF Boba Fett. And until we get a Moffex Mandalorian, I don't see the point in size comparison to two, at least until Mando season two comes out, because that's going to be for you guys <laughs> and you guys alone. Maybe I'll do it in the photos. You know, never know. Here he is next to the Hasbro Ham, which is the heavy Mando. As you can see here, uh, still bigger size discrepancy, but the regular Mando uh, is a little bit taller. And I'm going to show you how and why, right? When compared to the Black Series one, the SHF is actually taller, which is something I technically didn't expect. Now, it's weird, though, right? Because, like... I don't know if it's because my legs are further apart, but when I put the legs together, you'll see that he is clearly a little bit taller than the Black Series, but it won't show on my camera good enough, which is crazy because he's actually a little bigger. So uh, I think that's a first for SHF for being bigger than Black Series. So I got to definitely keep that in mind. I know his helmet significantly bigger, though, as well as his paint design is different. So, yeah, when you want to compare this guy to other Star Wars stuff, though, uh, size wise let's uh try some stuff out so here's chewy here is cara dune this is a black series one because i don't think shf is going to do one of her she is a little bit smaller than him which is pretty cool then we have stuff like shf luke right we have han which i feel like he should definitely have some sort of interaction with han that would be cool here he is with an SH Figarts Stormtrooper. Ooh, I forgot how loose my Stormtrooper is. This guy may not make it. <laughs> right? He has some pretty good uh, size comparisons with that. Now we're going to do a next batch. This is going to be a Hasbro Black Series Stormtrooper. Then we got SHF Kuga. As always, your main man. Here is a 1000 Toys human, which can definitely fit into the Star Wars universe because there's all sorts of life forms, especially droids. And Articulated Icons Ninja. Then we have stuff like Mythic Legions, which is gonna be bigger, but I'm gonna, so I'm gonna put that in the background. Then last but not least, we're going to do a Mezco, which is gonna be Mezco me. I always have them on display, so it's always handy dandy to get to them. And as you can see, even uh, the Mezco Me is bigger. So yeah, all in all, nice piece. A uh, little bit of a weird tech design um, with the bandolier, which I'm still a little weirded out by. But again, uh, this is a Japanese release only. There won't be a stateside domestic release because of that ban on Star Wars. If you didn't know about it, that's a long history for another day. But all in all, I think this is something definitely worth buying, especially if you've enjoyed the Mandalorian. One last size comparison for you all that I didn't think about. Here is my baby Yoda from Kinesthetic that I got when he visited me here in the US. And here is a Black Series baby Yoda. 
for you guys to see. So yeah, if you guys have enjoyed this, please like. You don't have to sub, just like the, like the video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative. And as please, always, be good, do good, drink your water. Later.